Like I said, I might not be able to account for them for now. I told that uh, I told that uh, to represent the right title of the American government would be human beings, but one fact you cannot deny was that he was a legend in his own way. In the area of tradition and culture, he was unmatched and exceptional. He brought dignity and honor to the United States. For your time, during his reign, witnessed the dangerous growth of the development. He brought back the glory of their life and put to your time and the decision of that on the mind of the world. Perhaps the area in which our late father is there and was well known and respected was in the area of intellectual and academic pursuit. He was an intellectual powerhouse, an intellectual colossus. His brain and intellectual capacity and capa capability was second to none. At times, I wonder how a man that had only a secondary education could rise to such an intellectual art. But that was quite easy for you. Always to be doing. researching. Never stop learning until the past one. We the children therefore felt that one of the best ways to keep his legacy alive is through academic works of this nature. On a lighter note, I remember one day 
I jokingly said to him, Kabi, you see, you know children inherit a lot of traits from their father. For example, some of your children will inherit your sense of dressing. Kabi, she was a dresser. I'm sure the ladies in this assembly will attest to that. Not only the ladies in the assembly, ladies all over the world. I told you, some of your children will edit your dancing dexterity. Some of your children will edit your political prowess and genuity. The testimony is before today. Excuse me. Some of your children will love women, to which he laughed. <laughs> That means he loved them. He loved women. <laughs> but if I told him, I said, sir, that means he, if I had a choice, that means he, in asking for a trait, I would like that I would like to read it from you. I will ask that you remove your brain and give it to me. And he laughed. <laughs> that was how intelligent our father was. He had both, both native and academic intelligence. One thing the death of our father and death in general has taught me is the shortness and brevity of our life here on earth. We therefore need to leave our footprint on the sands of time so that prosperity can remember us when we are gone. The question I want to ask you is what legacy are you living for prosperity to remind you for? We can't all be like Awolo, yeah. like Nelson Mandela, even like Yami D or Nai But you can, in your own little way, leave something for prosperity to remember you for. As I close, particularly to say, to sing a song. Our father was well known for this. Princess, I His Royal Majesty of Akiola, Akiriwa, Latiri, Ulubosi, the Ifetedo, Kabiesi. Kabiesi, His Royal Majesty of Mosu, Oyekola, Awedalawa, Iba, Chibishi, Kabiesi. 
Kadu Isri, Joya Majesty, Oba Abdul Rasi, Adito Isri, Adini Kulato, Jaye Ola, Onna Onyibode, Ito Hola, Kadu Isri, Joya Majesty, Oba Adito Yeki, Adini Ola, Leibo, Ti Ipako, Kadu Isri, Joya Majesty, Oba Okwala Adiwane Alibu, Allah wa Dios, Awaii. Have you seen? Atau ya si Duo Shoko, Oba Jimo Adiwane, Mon Bebe, Adiwane, 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 Ukuwa mamba le tuani, chini ba aibu chuo si asoju akiipe ekabo. Honorable Otongo Dorama, member elect of your East or your West constituency. My dear, you are welcome. Abidjan Street, Abidjan, Abidjan Street, Abidjan. Oki former Oki barista Kola Wanyi Esson Barista Kola Wanyi Esson Your most welcome Representing Adeleke Representing the Vice Chancellor Adeleke University And his chief Professor Shuji Alao Resulti Alao, you are welcome sir Your most welcome Commandant of your state peace corps Patriot Rukman Adelowo You are welcome celebrated his 80th birthday not knowing that by 2023 it will be played once again in his absence that is God for you so I urge all of us please sit back and let's watch the life and times of Kabiesi like I said this was produced during his own time so please sit back for the next few minutes and enjoy this video documentary on WC the last year for you. cerebral capacity which generates a standing ovation of great intellectual minds. Intellectualism does not come in a day. It's a result of hard work. I have a very strong and unceasing appetite to read, to acquire knowledge. A quintessential progenitor of the Yoruba myths. 
a legendary custodian of Yoruba culture and tradition. He has uh, what we call wisdom. The type of to King Solomon or Suleiman. Wise, deep, and philosophical. Example of the legacy of outstanding organizational skills, robust style of governance, rich culture and tradition, military virtue and trait that the forefathers of the Yoruba people bequeathed to them. Remarkably, Oronyo, the first king of Oyo, inherited the part of his father's land where the ancient building that was used as a palace was situated. Consequently, he was given the title, the Alafi, meaning the owner of the palace. Oranya inherited their father's palace and the land. Taking an exploratory journey through history, Oyo has heard about 40 kings who are referred to as Obas in Yoruba language before Alafni Adeniro Adeyemi II, the father of the current Alafi of Oyo, was enthroned. Before this time, precisely on October 15, 1938, God blessed Oba Adeniro Adeyemi II and his wife, Olori Bironke Akoke, with a baby boy, and was named Lamidi Atoda Olaiwala Adeyemi. I was born before my father became the Alafi on 15 October 1938. I can recall every video that I was sent at very early age to a kindergarten school at Idiokwe. They call it Olodini. Allah Fiyah Deniro Adiyemi II was a devoted Muslim, but his love for Western education and readiness to pay any price for his young son to access quality education suggested that he probably had a divine instinct concerning Prince Lamidi Olaiwala's destiny. For instance, at a time when nursery education was uncommon, Oba Adeniro used his position to devise a kindergarten education at St. Andrew's Demonstration School for his son before he later sent him to a Quranic school at Isain. Although my father was not uh, literate in the Western education, but he happened to be very close to the colonial officers who came to York. And he himself was a lover of education. And he wanted to make his sibling let them get sound education. After having completed that three in the primary school, I was withdrawn and sent to Ishain to study the Quran. I mastered the Quran at the age of uh, Seven or eight. After Prince Lamidi had finished his Quranic education at Isain, his father, Oba Adeniro Adeyemi II, brought him back to Oyo, but surprisingly, not to the loving and waiting hands of his mom in the palace. Instead, he sent him once again to go and stay with the headmaster of St. Andrew's Demonstration School, now St. Andrew's College, Oyo. This was done not for the acquisition of elementary education alone, but for the young prince to experience an efficient home training, which perhaps could be considered unbecoming of a royal prince. 
In other words, the young Lamidi Adeyemi, though, as it were, was born with a silver spoon, his father never allowed him to use the silver spoon because he rated virtues like perseverance, humility, tolerance, and other qualities so high and indispensable for anyone who will occupy the exalted position of the Alafi in future. Talking about Alafi, Lamidi Olai Wala Adeyemi, the third, what? Why is he so unique? Why is he so different? Basically, we believe that God has been preparing this young man for this position, even when we did not know about it. Why is he the only child that is being thrown here and there all over the place? If not for the fact that God was preparing him quietly. Eventually, Allah Adeniro Adeyemi II sent young Prince Lamidi Adeyemi to Abeokuta, where he lived with the then Alaki of Egbaland, Oba Sa Oladipu Adimola, one of the few literate monarchs at that time. Prince Adeyemi was able to learn a lot in Abeokuta until the 1948 riot against tax without representation broke out. This protest by the Egba women, which was led by late Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, forced the Alaki of Egba land, Oba Ladipo Adimola, to abdicate his throne and proceed on exile to Oshobo, which became another opportunity for young Prince Lamidi Adeyemi to learn palace administrative techniques. I was one of those who accompanied the Alaki to Oshobo on exile. Why is Oshobo? I became very close to the old man, to the Alaki of Egwa land. He took me as his son, was very close to him. I started studying the palace administration there while with him. advice of the Alaki of Egba land, Prince Adeyemi was taken to Lagos, where he lived with Sir Kuforola Apayomi in Kefi, Ikoi, Lagos. He attended Boys Modern School of Alindi and later Timumu Methodist School to complete his primary school before he proceeded to the prestigious St. Gregory's College of Alindi, where his academic intelligence continued to stand out. It is pertinent to say that Obalinde used to be a place where people from different ethnic groups settled in Lagos. Hence, living in this community requires sagacity and a good dose of native intelligence. For obvious reasons, Crown Prince Olai Wokla felt at home in this challenging environment. He had his own share of youthful adventure in sports. He was a skillful footballer and was nicknamed Stanley Matthews after a popular British footballer in recognition of his dribbling mastery. He was also a long distance runner as well as a dexterous boxer, fondly referred to by his boxing fans as the Slumber Boy. Everybody knows me in Lagos Island and Milan as the dribbler as Sandy Martin. In boxing, I was named Slumber Boy. Slumber Boy in the sense that I put them to sleep. I had over 60 bouts and I lost only two. All these things are the trait of somebody who is destined to be great. Athlete today, boxer today, footballer today, in sport, sporting activity is no longer mere sport. It has become big business. Prince Olaiwala Adeyemi left St. Gregory's College with a very good result and would have traveled to a London university for a degree course in law. Unfortunately, he lost his father, Alafi Adeyemi II, unexpectedly, causing this ambition to be aborted. 
Prince Adeyemi didn't allow this setback to deter him. Rather, he encouraged himself and picked up a job at the Royal Exchange Assurance Company in Marina, Lagos, where the series of trainings he had received over the years, coupled with his diligence and proficient writing skill, were brought to bear to earn him a rapid promotion at work. Eventually, with his innate acumen and knack for business, he invested in automobile business and other forms of businesses, which ultimately paid off, causing him to climb the ladder of success, so much so he became a landlord in Lagos at a very young age. At the age of 21, I already had a building of my home because of the, my effort in taking care of the buildings where I rented from Mr. Oponu Wuzu. The man was from Padali, but he had a lot of property. Prince Adiyemi continued to add to his educational attainment by attending several courses, both within and outside Nigeria. It was during this period that he got married to his first love, Miss Adibat Nilola Oladili, now Ayaba Adibat Nilola Adiyemi. I was married both in traditional and Islamic right to former Miss Abibat Nilola Oladili, now Ayaba Abibat Nilola Adiyemi. My second wife, also from Lagos, was Miss Ramat Adidayo. He then, she also became, they had all my children from me, from Lagos. It is indeed remarkable to underscore the fact that from his youthful years, the Crown Prince Adeyemi knew what he wanted in life, and he pursued it with passion, without indulging in any frivolity. Hence, he became strictly dedicated to his job, his family, and his study, a pattern of life he holds jealously to heart, even to date. <laughs> Today, because of um, the responsibility of being on the throne, you know, that um, closeness, that um, expression of tenderness has reduced a bit, but despite that, he still finds time to take care of his children. Will you, will you, will you be surprised if I told you that uh, despite the busy schedule as a laughing, still finds time to spend some time with his children. In recording the significant landmarks in the life of Allah Fionlai Wala Adeyemi III, it is pertinent to accentuate the circumstances that led to his enthronement as the Allah of your kingdom. But how he became Allah was the work of God. You know there are three stages. Nomination by the family whose turn it is to produce candidate or candidates presentation of the selected candidate to the kingmakers who is select the man they want and thirdly approval by the government the rest is just ceremony and so on 
Um, even though there may be a declaration, Section 21 of Cap 19 of the laws of Western Nigeria, which was enacted on the 20th of June 1957 by Chief Awudo, Rochi Williams and Co., says notwithstanding that this appointment it has been made in accordance with the chief's law and the approved and registered declaration, the government may nevertheless set aside, approve or set aside the said appointment in the interest of peace, order, and good government. So you don't become a law on nothing unless it, it was approved. Before the Midi Atanda, Omalu Olodu, he became the Alafin. And Alafin had been appointed in the wrong way. And there was a short circuit, which, and the vacancy arose in January or February 1968. But we did not fill that vacancy throughout 68, 69, 70, until 14th of January, 1971. So by the time that I was called upon to contest for the truth, I was able to convince the business mogul in Lagos, CBO as among of Blessed Mori. He said, what was my background? I told him, how do you acquire this property? I told him the process I took, my bank account, all the business I was doing, buying real estate at that time. I had a landed property at Jassa when I was coming or contesting for the throne. I had some more of this property. And in my bank account when I sold them, I had 24,000 pounds. We have not been using now and then. She was convinced. But with my business acumen, with my brain very, very strict, I lead a Spartan life. Oban Lamidi Adiyemi was selected among other interested contestants to become a laughing in the year 1968. But the government of the day delayed his coronation and he was not crowned until January 1971. And so he became the Alafi of Oyo Kingdom, Ikuba Bayegi, Alashe Ikeji Orisha. marked the beginning of another journey saddled with a huge responsibility for Alafi to protect, defend, and project the Yoruba culture and tradition for which he is so proud of. Kabiesi, the Alafi of Oyo, has brought his education, his exposure, his superlative native intelligence, and sterling leadership attributes to bear in the discharge of his role as a paramount ruler, having a clear understanding of the enormity of the function of the Alafi. There is an age-long adage in Yoruba language which says, Ishedale do loyo, ajishebi oyo lari, oyo ki ishebi eni koko, meaning oyo is a pace setter that is second to none. This adage underscores the beauty of democratic values and the concept of separation of power in the Yoruba monarchical system. For instance, the concept of Oyomisi, which is the body of wise men who constitute the cabinet of the Alafi of Oyo. He said that no lawyer, that the due process is the nature of government in no lawyer empire. The military formation, you have 16 the Aaron Kakafu, 16 the upper Keda, and 15 lawyer Keda, or two Kakafu, Ushi Kakafu. Balogu, or to Balogu, Ushi Balogu, Lieutenant, Lieutenant General, all those things who will achieve the Kakafu. So by military formation, 
It was one of the best at that time in Africa. And the ingenuity of our rulers in New York demonstrate that the Africans have brain and Africa can also match any other community outside the world. We were surprised because the OBC system survived to today. The other thing does not carry the government of the social but it is assisted by people who they say of the a body of white men who prefer answer to solution. That's the meaning of your mission. To make that down in the Olodi or your mission, Mrs. Basson of Oyo. Agbati oni oni tete mileni. Samu oni oni tete. Alakeni oni keni. Laguna. Nusikan, tu as là à qui ne couche de quel pas. À ce pas lui ce qu'il dit, à ce pas de. Il ne tient même pas ni au palais, mais à bas d'un temps. On ne le passe pas. Sur Awata de Rousse. Non, 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 quand on vient ici, c'est du bagne. Awata ministre, voilà. I want to buy the government. I want to your mobile. I want to be a malignant. If he said that you're the only one who is not that in the way, I thought more. I laugh a lot. You're taking me more. I laugh a lot. You're supposed to walk down at a laugh. Si Baba y, toi Balo, voyez la ligne, il voit Baba, tu as ton doigt, mais c'est bien. This cordial relationship between KBC and the Oyomisi has no doubt brought tremendous progress and transformation to Oyo Town. Progress in Oyo Kingdom is not only attributable to the good relationship between KBC, Olaiwala Adeyemi, and the Oyomisi. KBC also uses his goodwill with past and present military or civilian leaders at both the federal and state levels for the benefit of Oyo Kingdom. His Imperial Majesty Obalaiwole Adeyemi has on many occasions publicly eulogized these political leaders for their love and support for the Oyo Empire. <laughs> Remarkably, the relationship between the current governor of Oyo State, Senator Abiola Jimobi, and the Alafi of Oyo, throughout the governor's two terms of eight years in office, has been that of a father and a son. I think, unarguably, is one of the most well-informed Obas in Nigeria. His intellectual prowess is second to none. He's a very deep man. He is very conversant with the traditions and culture of the Yorubas and in Nigeria in general. If His Imperial Majesty of Allah Waladi III is celebrated today, it is because of his priceless and modest contributions to national development. He has carried out many assignments for the country and is well appreciated for the quality of his delivery. For instance, in 1975, Alafi was invited as the only Oba from Yoruba land to perform the holy pilgrimage to Mecca with General Murtala Mohammed. The federal government honored him with the national honor of CFR in 1979. 
1980, he was appointed the pioneer chancellor of the newly established University of Sokoto, now Othman Danfodio University in Sokoto. Kabiyeshi served the university so much that he was recommended again and again till he spent three terms totaling an unprecedented 12 years tenure as chancellor. Suffice to say that Obadi Emi III presented several papers throughout this period that he was deservedly honored with Doctor of Letters, LLD, Honoris Causa. And owing to his remarkable contributions to Othman Danfodio University, Kabiyeshi Adeyemi was appointed the Chancellor of the University of Meduguri. It's a genius by any standard, and he speaks impeccable English. And when he speaks English, we would think that he hardly memorized it. He is very vast in the history and tradition of Yoruba. It's a repository of the custom of the universe. And it's a man who will do anything to preserve the tradition of the universe. In his primary constituency as a foremost traditional ruler, Obadi Emi III has used his position to better the lot of not a few royal majesties by facilitating the elevation of many of them to obedient crown kings, not to mention his passionate clamor for the continuous improvement of their welfare. <laughs> As Kabiyeshi Ikuba Bayeye turns 80, it is a fervent wish and prayer of his subjects, his friends, his family and well-wishers that God will grant him many more years of peaceful and fruitful reign as they are laughing Ikuba Bayeye and Lashe Ikejorisha. From the bottom of my heart, on behalf of my dream, for being a wonderful father. You have been a father in the million. Very caring, very loving. You gave us a good education. What we are today, because of God and because of you, we appreciate you. You are one in a million. If I call, we call a guest. I want to I love you. I salute you. I salute your courage. I salute your wisdom, your sagacity. I salute your ability to gather your people together and transform their lives. I salute Kabiyesi, your generosity, your kindness to your people. I sincerely wish him many, many more years on the throne of his fathers and, of course, for the benefit of Yorubas. I wish he had loved him well and uh, a good time celebrating his birthday. We are very proud of him and I'm very happy that he, he, is, he reigns during my own time in office as the governor of Ohio State. I take the opportunity, therefore, to wish him very, very long life, productive life. I wish him another 30 years on the throne. <laughs>
and maybe two lunar years after. Some of the certainty about this pastor that after the celebration of the 58th coronation of the pastor, over the end of the day, more of us will figure out about the need for sustaining and laughing to prepare a people group for the past of public administration to be conversant with the tradition, custom, and culture of the Yoruba and look beyond the African continent to appreciate the growing influence of the Yoruba religion and knowledge systems. But his past or by the name of far is leading companionship of the patterns of the spiritual realm and his place in the others of fiction among the Yoruba. He occupied a new state in the kingship institution, which has been described as the most laborious and flamboyant aspect of Yoruba culture. The man of our I think the documentary has done a lot to the circumstances of his birth, his training, his being taken all over his mother for one reason or the other. But suffice to say that the mother of the mother at the end of the church, but not far from your. When he was born, there were perfect sins. Only between and Paul to the day. By the final remnant and providential intervention, beyond the care, understanding and comprehension of their mothers, Prince Mahmoud Yadin, very early in life, became exposed to a comprehensive range of informal learning religious structures, cultural values, traditions and customs, which eventually take off as, a, as necessary personal experiences for leadership among the Yoruba. The point must be raised that our Amelia Dele was raised by a clear Korean father who has spotted him very early in life as a child of enormous promise oh, and destiny, of a and a was clear in his mind that the son of a lady was in many ways very special and separate from his mother children. It is said that of a lady and a lady had a deep family that included more than a hundred wives. Despite his age and position in the family, Obalamiti Adele became easily identified with wisdom, native intelligence, eloquence, independence, and unquestioned law for knowledge. He was inquisitive, curious, and restless in the pursuit of excellence in whatever he did, even as a young person. For good reasons, that many people do not appreciate his initials, but by right to the end of the day, did not allow his son to be unduly impressed and spoiled by the largesse and opulence of royalty. It is said that the father of Baba Lamidi Adiyani talked exactly to his father for two or more important reasons. His father was foretold as a worldly replacement for a son that died before he was born. Again, our Lamidi Adiyani came into the world with a third thing that transformed him as a father to be hated. In an interview of our daily session, I want to go to you for a when I came into this world, because of what happened at my papa, I was told that my papa excited my father so seriously because I happened to be a replica of him. There was a laceration on his death breast, and I was born with that laceration on my death breast and his body. I saw on my bed what you would see on my father's bed, but he never told.